This is you. You've gone through months of learning to code, hopefully the right way, and now you're ready to take the next step and learn by doing. You have spent time preparing your resume, portfolio, and cover letters all in the hopes of landing that first job opportunity. But then, you hear about the dreaded technical interview. You've heard all the rumors about how difficult it can be, and you've seen the low percentage of people who actually pass this stage. So now, your confidence has most likely gone down, and you're probably shitting yourself. But don't you worry, because today, I'm going to give you the exact steps you need to take in order to ace any technical interview that comes your way. The first thing you need to understand is that when you're getting asked these questions, companies are not just looking for you to give them the right answer on a particular problem. It goes a bit deeper than that. The first thing they're looking for is your analytic skill. What that means is really just the way you work through your problems and how you analyze what is being asked of you. Here, they're really trying to dive deeper into your thought process and how you break things down. The second thing they're looking for is your actual coding skills. Is your code clean and dry? Is it readable? Is it scalable? These sorts of things. The third thing they're looking for is your technical skills. Are you fundamentally sound? Do you actually know the things you're writing down or did you memorize them? Do you know coding principles? Do you understand the trade-offs in time and space complexity between different solutions? And lastly, they're looking for your communication skills. Do you communicate well as you're making your way through a problem? Would you fit well on the team? Are you verbal when hitting a sticking point in the code? Now that we have gone over what these different employers are looking for, let's dive deeper into the exact steps you need to take when getting asked a algorithm and data structure problem. First things first, sit on the question. Now what does that mean? You're not physically going to sit anywhere. What I mean by this is digest the question, repeat the question, dissect the question. Don't start working on any problem until you have at least read it two to three times. Step two, verify the constraints. Once you understand the question being asked of you, you then need to find out if there are any additional hoops you need to jump through, figuratively speaking. Constraints is pretty much just edge cases and different issues that may arise as you're working through a problem. For example, if you're working with integers in a problem, which you most likely are, you can ask, are all the numbers going to be positive or will there be negative numbers as well? This is a great question because depending on the interviewer's answer, this might change the way you handle your solution. Step 3. Write out your test cases. Test cases is just a fancier way of saying examples. This is the step where you grab your constraints and start listing out different examples and their possible solutions. And when I say solutions, I just mean the answer, not the whole process to get to the answer. This step is so important because it lets you visualize the different outcomes that can arise from that one question being asked. Step 4. Be verbal about your approach. In this step, I want you to communicate with the interviewer even more and start talking about how you're thinking of handling the problem. Are you thinking of a recursive approach or an iterative one? You can talk about the exact method. For example, I'm thinking I'm going to solve this problem using the two-pointer method or maybe with the sliding window method. Just remember, it's extremely important to let the interviewer know your train of thought, not just to demonstrate your communication skills, but because if you're not on the right track, then it will be pretty clear when the interviewer looks at you all confused. Step five, code your brute force solution first. Now some of you may be confused. All that brute force means is the most simple way that you can think of to get to your solution. Here, you're not thinking about how bad your time complexity is or how repetitive your solution looks. All we want in this step is the correct answer to the problem. Then we can worry about optimizing our solution. Why you ask? Because it may take you a while to find the perfect solution with the best time and space complexity. And the last thing you want is to waste 30 to 40 minutes on a question and not have anything to show for. Step 6 and the final step, optimize your solution. Once you've solved the problem with a brute force approach and you've tested your approach with your test cases, now you're ready to spend some time looking for ways to optimize your solution. Here, look at your original solution and analyze where the time complexity is getting dragged or where you're allocating more memory than necessary. This is important because once you know where the problem is stemming from, you can think of ways to fix it or different approaches that may work better than your original one. And again, don't forget to test your solution against your test cases. We hope this video was helpful. As always, good luck and happy hacking.